Hello, my name is Carl, and today I will be talking about Pokken Tournament Deluxe. Pokken was developed by Bandai Namco Entertainment and was published by Nintendo on the Switch on September 22nd, 2017. It has a manufacturer's suggested retail price of $59.99 and an ESRB rating of E10 Plus for Fantasy Violence. It is yet another Wii U port, this time of a fighting game that features and I quote, explosive Pokemon battles. It takes gameplay elements of the popular fighting franchise Tekken, but it uses a Pokemon cast and setting. So in this spinoff, you arrive at the Ferrum region, which is a giant island imbued with a special energy known as Gaia. So in the Ferrum region, instead of people taking part in the popular turn-based strategy battles of the main series, most trainers in Pokemon take part in Ferrum battles. Now, Ferrum battles utilize Gaia energy to form a bond of what is known as synergy between the Pokemon and the trainer. Now, the Pokemon can utilize this synergy to power up its stats temporarily and utilize super special uh, synergy burst moves. So you arrive at the region and you set your sights on the Ferrum League Championship. But things take a turn for a worse when uh, the power of Gaia all over the region starts weakening. And sightings of a mysterious Pokemon just might have something to do with it. So, a little bit of my history with Pokemon Tournament. I did have it on the Wii U. I did play it, and I enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed it enough to, uh, you know, purchase essentially the same game twice. So that should tell you a little bit of what I feel about it. Um, overall though, I'm not a huge fan of fighting games, which I will touch on later, but I do consider myself to be a fan of Pokemon despite, uh, falling off recently. I haven't played a regular Ruby or Alpha Sapphire, Sun or Moon, uh, and I've got Sword and Shield just sitting there in my drawer. I did play Let's Go Pikachu though. Um, so like I touched on before, I would like to get into a few points, I guess, about how I'm going to be reviewing this game. Um, the interesting thing about fighting games is is they're competitive games in which long after you've beaten the story on all the side modes, the main thing that keeps the game alive is player versus player fighting. So it would track that one of the things that I can use to judge this game is how how well does it center around this player versus player fighting. But here's the rub. That's not how I played this game. I did not participate in really any competitive anything with this game. I, I played it like you would a normal game. I finished it, and then I was done. So I will be discussing some thoughts, you know, about how this uh, uh, holds up as a fighting game. For the most part, I'm going to be talking about this as I would, you know, a normal game that I just play through and then I'm done with. Uh, so if you're watching this because you want to get into the Pokken tournament, uh, you know, fighting community uh you're probably in the wrong place feel free to stay but just a forewarning now after that long-winded uh explanation now for the actual review part into the gameplay so just as i i expected this game has no gameplay other than fighting you navigate menus and you fight there is no walking around there's no exploring it's just fighting so the question is how is the fighting it's actually really interesting and enjoyable to play. It's not too uh, big or daunting to get into as like kind of a, a newbie fighting game uh, person like myself. There's a few interesting mechanics. There are actually like two gameplay styles packed into one. You start out in what's known as field phase where it's free roaming and you can like, uh, you know, go around in a 3D space. And, but once you, someone hits their opponent with, uh, a certain kind of predetermined move, it's which is a dual phase in which it snaps the two characters, you know, in one plane. And so they now fight in 2D. And then once a certain, you know, combo gets finished, it switches back to field phase. And, you know, you go back and forth from there. There's also the rock, paper, scissors mechanic of, of uh, counters beat attacks, which beat grabs, which beat counters. Uh, there is the synergy boost gauge, which is kind of the big selling point. Uh, during battle, you build up synergy. 
Um, and then once your synergy gauge is full, you can activate it and your Pokemon will get a uh, energy boost. And at any time during it, you can activate uh, your, your super burst attack um, to try to hit them with a, a super strong attack. But you only get one per synergy burst. Uh, you also get a set of two support Pokemon, which you can call at various times of the match to do a variety of different things. Um, and there's also something called cheer skills, which in between rounds raises or lowers your synergy gauge, depending on what you set it, because each game is a best of three, at least in the, in the main, you know, typical content, it's a best of three. And some things carry on, like your synergy gaze, carry on between rounds. So sometimes you want to, um, like, purposely throw match number two so you go in with to match number three with an advantage so you can win it all. Um, as for the gameplay itself, it's actually really satisfying to play. There's something magical about a Pikachu Libre, which, by the way, is my main. She's awesome. Uh, I played her through the entire game, did not touch, like, any other character. It, it's it's amazing to see her kicking the crap out of a Machamp. I just love it. You know, it, it feels so good playing this game. They did a really good job of making the gameplay itself feel and look entertaining. Um, that being said, I, I do have some gripes with it. Uh, while playing the game really does feel good at first, um, I soon fell in kind of this like tedious rhythm. I, I found out, okay, I could just hit him with this move to switch from field to dual pay phase. And then I could hit him with that combo to switch, you know, switch back and then just do that again, rinse and repeat. And the worst part is I beat the entire game pretty much. And the post game tourney just doing that. And that in and of itself is kind of lame in my opinion that I could just do the same thing over and over and beat the entire game. I didn't have to use my brain. I could just, you know, kind of spam. The only time I had to use my brain was like the strategy of in between rounds. Like, did I want to throw the second match so I could win the third match, you know? Um, and then like, despite <laughs> playing that game so simply and winning, there were still a couple things in training mode that it said, Oh, do this. And I just didn't know what it wanted me to do. So I had to skip it. Um, and so like, I know that there are mechanics beyond my my grasp that I didn't use that I didn't need to use, and that makes like it leaves a sour taste in my mouth. Like the cherry on top of all this was, I uh, I challenged my sister to a couple fights. Right, she picks this long range character, and she spammed like the Y button or whatever, and just shot me with long range stuff. And she, someone who had never played this game before won and beat me someone who had beaten the game because I just didn't know what to do to dodge this attack. Either it's broken and, you know, which I would hope that didn't get through, or there's just something really simple that I just didn't know how to do. And like I said, that leaves a really big sour taste in my mouth in that there's something very simple about the game that I never found out and I never needed because the game never challenged me to figure it out. So, I mean, while it was, it was still fun. The gameplay you get from fighting computers won't, doesn't really translate to what the developers intend of making this a fighting game. You know, there are lots of games that the main uh, draw is the player versus player, but the campaign uh, prepares you for the player versus player. Splatoon is is a great example of this. Pokémon Tournament, as far as I can see, not too much. Story-wise, the story-wise, it's like it's very much your standard like Pokémon story. I mean, kind of even more watered down since this isn't like a whole adventure, it's just a fighting game, like I said. I mean, you, you set your sights on your your uh Ferrum League Championship. Shadow Mewtwo shows up. Uh, the Gaia starts weakening, so they have to th to to cancel the tournament. Uh, you beat Shadow Mewtwo, the tournament goes back on, uh, and you, you get the championship. Everybody's happy, you know. It's it's your standard affair. Uh, there are like very very few actual NPCs with personality. Most of them is just you know NPC number thirty two that you fought in match five 
of the uh, Chroma League of the Ferrum, you know, tournament or whatever. There's like a few masters, like you play them, you fight them once and then you're done. And that's, that's it. You know, there's, there's, in the, there's the standard affair in this of the, you know, your bond of friendship between your Pokemon pulled through all that kind of, kind of schlock. I mean, it's like, it's such a whatever story. It wasn't like bad or anything. There just is nothing there, which I kind of like, I kind of wanted something, but I didn't expect anything because it's a Pokemon fighting game. Like, why would I? Um, although one thing, there is voice acting, and I was fine with most of it. However, your guide, Nia, is her voice is really off-putting to me. I don't know if this is just me, but she's either has the best text-to-speech voice that I've ever heard or one of the worst actors that I've ever heard because her voice sounds like uncanny valley robotic I had to turn her voice off like I had to like to have her shut up I didn't like it you know it's it's really weird someone in the comments let me know if I'm going crazy or not because that is really off-putting anyway on to uh graphics and art style um to me the Pokemon series has never been like groundbreaking visually. Uh, I remember back on like Pokemon Platinum where like we thought the distortion world was cool, but like that's really just because Pokemon has been so flat and 2D before. All of a sudden they threw something 3D at us and it feels like amazing, even though those 3D visuals aren't like that great. Uh, but I was pleasantly surprised with Pokemon Tournament. The, you know, the, the pictures on the box, those are actually a pretty good representation of what you get in in the game. There was more of attention, like, paid to fur textures, like scales. There's a lot of uh, cool things done with light, you know. Uh, like I said with uh, Pikachu Libre, as I experienced playing with her, um, the orange patches on the side of her costume were shiny. Uh, I believe there's a stage with, like, puddles in it. Uh, and you could see the uh, neon lights reflecting off the puddles. Really cool stuff. Um, I was really pleasantly surprised to see what they did with this game graphically. Um, also, they do a good job with special effects. You know, electricity, your shield that you throw up, uh, the, the the synergy bursts, um, Pikachu Libres. Oh, my God. Uh, look up Thunderclap Press. It is the most hype move I have ever seen in a fighting game hands down, uh, when Pikachu hops on that post and cheers Pikachu along with the crowd. Mwah! Chef's kiss. You think I'm crazy until you look it up. Anyway, I digress. Um, this, yeah, this is definitely a visually appealing game. They, they made it look really good, and I, I, I really appreciated it because there's only like a little over 20 Pokemon you can play as, so I mean, I would expect that they would put a lot of effort into making them look good. Uh, finally, the music. Again, I say this like every time, but I'm not a music guy. Uh, I had no problem with it. It was fine. There is like no music memory that sticks out to me. I just remember not being offended by anything, not being blown away from, you know, anything. It, typical frantic fighting game affair. No problem with it. So, overall. Like I said at the start of the review, I did not play Pokémon with the end goal of going to any tournaments. I played it just like I would any other game, you know? And to that end, I, I enjoyed myself. It did it it's did its job. I played it. I played through the post game and I enjoyed it, you know? I bought it again on Switch, played through it again, a fun little romp. <laughs> the biggest problem is like I don't see like I can't see myself going back to it like ever. If anyone wanted to play it with me, it would most likely be because they actually knew how to play competitively. And to that end, I wouldn't stand a chance, even though I've, you know, beaten the game, uh, it, you know, because it just I do not believe that how the 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 story trained me is how people actually fight in this game, which is my biggest problem with, you know, the concept of this as a fighting game. Uh, so I would get destroyed with anyone by anyone that wanted to play me because they would probably know how to play real people. And I would only know how to play against 
computers. So while I did enjoy it, it falls victim to the same thing I see most fighting games. And that's just a learning curve that is too steep. And honestly, kind of broadening a bit. That's that's why I'm not a fan of fighting games in, a, in general. Uh, it just, it, they're so hard to get into. Even if the story mode is a piece of cake, you have to learn all this crap to, to even start fighting real people, you know? Uh, so I can't give you a proper recommendation if you're trying to put, look into like the, the competitive poke in scene, go elsewhere for that. But if you just want to have a bit of fun knocking other Pokemon around the ring, then, then this game will do you just fine. It's set out to be a Pokemon fighting game and gosh, dang it. It's a Pokemon fighting game. I wouldn't recommend like any casual player run out and buy this uh, right away. If you have some attachment, if you're a big Pokemon fan, go for it. If you're a big fighting game fan, go for it. I don't think it's a horrible one of either of them. Um, it, it, and to that end, I'm going to give it a seven. It's solid, a solid game. It's, it's a fun little game to get and play. Uh, it doesn't have any glaring flaws that I see, but if you don't find yourself drawn to the concept of a Pokemon fighting game, then I would say feel free to pass it up. Overall, though, uh, I hope you enjoyed my review, but let me know what you think. Do y'all disagree, agree with anything I said in the review? Anyone have anything they want to say about uh, fighting games in general? Agree or disagree? Put your answers in the comments below, but make sure to stay respectful. I'm looking at you, Karens. Anyway, stay safe out there, everybody. Thanks for checking out the review. And if you like what you saw, feel free to check out my other social media down in the description. And overall, have a wonderful day. Bye, everybody.